What's going on YouTube? So for many vehicles, especially in this segment, customers are often left choosing between style or functionality. However, that trade-off has never been present with this Volvo XC40. Now entering the 2021 model year, it is getting quite a number of updates as Volvo continues to refine the formula each and every year. But with the number of rivals also increasing every year, is this still one of the best choices? Let's go ahead and jump right in. So we'll start off today's video with the exterior because that's what's gonna grab your attention straight from the start. So this has always been a very, very stylish option in the segment as well as in the Volvo lineup. And that begins up here in the front. So you notice here on the R design, we have the fully black grill, which really contrasts nicely with this crisp white paint color on this example. Uh, if you go for the momentum, you're gonna have silver trim around this grill and the inscription has silver bars that run through it for a richer design. Now coming over here to your headlights, this is another area that really stands out. You have the full LED headlights across all the trim levels, even the base model with the signature Thor's hammer. Now for 2021, it gets even better though, because you now have the active bending as well as LED fog lights as standard equipment on every model. Now adding to the design statement that this vehicle makes, we have a wide variety of wheel options. On the R design, you have a standard 19 inch alloy. We have the optional 20s right here. Um, the other trim levels have 18, 19, or 20 inch options, all with a bunch of different designs. Now, heading up here to your mirrors. Uh, Volvo has really made a nice change this year, and that's for 2021, all the trim levels get all the options. So you have heating, power folding, auto dimming, and blind spot monitoring. Now, before we check out some of the rear 2021 changes for this XC40, I do want to stay here at the side and talk about just the overall look and a few of the features. So as far as how this looks, I think that this has a more substantial presence than a lot in this class do. Um, it just looks more like a traditional SUV with that boxy design. And as far as the individual design components, on the R design, you are gonna have a standard two-tone black roof. And if you want a really interesting look, you can get the momentum with an optional white roof. Now, checking out the rear itself, there have actually been a few changes for 2021. Now, uh, it's not gonna be in the taillights since you do still have these signature Volvo taillights. Um, most of this is gonna be LED. However, the turn signal and brake light is incandescent, which I'm a little bit disappointed about. But the change is gonna come here in the rear diffuser areas. For 2021, Volvo actually has eliminated the exposed rear exhaust, um, which I have to say I'm a little bit disappointed in, but uh, that is to give it that more environmentally friendly look. Um, so I do kind of understand where they're coming from. Now this would not be a Volvo model if it didn't have a lot of safety equipment to keep you and all of your family safe. Um, and I'm happy to say that the vast majority of your safety systems are gonna be standard on this XC40 model. Now the advanced package is where you're gonna get the really cool stuff like the pilot assist semi-autonomous driving systems as well as your adaptive cruise control. So as you can see, the exterior is a really strong point for this XC40, um, but I know that there's a lot of really cool stuff on the inside, especially with the packaging. So let's go ahead and check that out before we take it out in a spec. So walking up to the XC40, you will find a smart entry system with this signature Volvo key fob on the R design and up. As you can tell, this is made of real leather, and it does match with the interior color, which is very nice. For most art, is available via the Volvo On Call app. Now, to get inside the vehicle itself, there is a sensor behind the handle, so you just grab right behind it, and when you do, your mirrors will electrically fold out. And then checking out the cabin for 2021, you're not gonna find any like huge changes to the design 
Uh, but as you can tell, it continues to have a very fashionable and functional look. Now let's go ahead and talk about the interior material and color options. So for 2021, the fabric option has been deleted from the momentum. So you're going to start with standard real leather in your choice of charcoal or blonde colors. Now this R design, this is where we have the uh, new buck inserts inside of the leather trim seats. Um, and this is going to be the only color option available. And then on the inscription, you have full leather seats with the same charcoal and blonde color options, plus the amber and oxide red options. Now turning over here to your door trim, it is very nicely finished. We have a leatherette trim that runs all through here and then all along the top. You will notice a aluminum accent here with the R design. And two person memory seats are gonna be standard across the entire lineup. All four of your windows are one touch automatic. You have the aluminum pedals with the R design. And then as far as the seats themselves, every single XC40 will have a 10 way power adjusting seat with four way lumbar support and a manual thigh extension. And then like I was saying, we have the leather trim seats with the new buck inserts. Really attractive looking seat. Uh, I love the color contrast piping and stitching. And then the leather quality is also phenomenal. And one of the nice things about Volvo's lineup is that even on the more affordable priced models, they don't really lose much in terms of interior quality. So across our upper dash on the XC40, we have a soft touch plastic. Dropping down to the middle, again, we have a aluminum accent for the R design. This would be real wood if you go for the inscription. We have some more soft touch materials through here. And then on the lower part, you will find some hard touch plastics, but everything does fit together very nicely. Now standard across all XC40s is push button start. And after it fires up, you will find these standard 12.3 inch digital gauges, which became standard across the entire XC40 lineup starting last year. Uh, it, it does continue to be reconfigurable in terms of the display. Um, so you can change things like put the map into the middle um, as well as change different things with the colors. Now coming back to the steering wheel itself, you have electric power assisted steering and a really nice leather wrap steering wheel with color contrast stitching. Uh, one minor change you'll notice this year is that the R design branding has been eliminated. Now, as far as the steering wheel itself, it is going to be manual tilt and telescoping across all models, and then heating is available in the climate package. All right, so now let's go ahead and talk about interior storage. Now, the Swedes, they must really appreciate couponing because there are a lot of different places to stick the coupons. So, starting out underneath our center console here, this is a very nicely sized storage compartment. It does have a nice felt lining at the bottom and we can very easily stick our stack of coupons here. Now, there are a lot more places to stick things though. So we have our little trash can, which is a unique touch. We have our two cup holders. We have a little thing here, which will hold your phone upright. And then we have a really, really large center bin up here in the middle with ambient lighting inside of it. And this can be a wireless phone charging pad, optional across all the trim levels for 2021. Now, furthermore, we have some storage along the side here. We've actually got a storage tray underneath the seat that you can just pull out and pull back in. You could stick some coupons in there too. And then off to the side, we have lots of storage inside of the doors, very generous. And it is covered in this really cool carpet, which I'll mention can be put into that orange color, which makes for a really bold and crazy look. So overall, it's very easy for me to declare this the best in the class by far. All right, so now let's go ahead and return over here to the shifter. So this is an electronic shifter, but it's not the same as in other Volvo products. So to operate it, what you have to do is pull back once, that's gonna put you in neutral, pull back again, that's gonna put you in drive, pull back again, and that's gonna put you in manual mode. Now, one important thing I want to make note of is that paddle shifters have been eliminated from the R design for 2021. 
Now, to go back into reverse, we'll have to go the opposite direction with two clicks. And once we head into here, you will find the standard backup camera across all the models. It does have active trajectory as well as parking sensors. And then a 360 degree camera system is available. You just have to option that on with the advanced package on all three trim levels. And then for park, you just press the P next to the shifter. Right behind that, you will find your electronic parking brake and your auto brake hold function. Above that, we have some of our connections right there. And then you'll come up to the audio controls. Now in this specific example, we just have the standard sound system, which has eight speakers. There is an optional 13 speaker Harman Kardon sound system, however, but let's go ahead and sample this one. Overall sound quality of this system is actually excellent, um, even though this is the standard sound system. And you also notice that there are no speakers in the door trims, they're actually located kind of hidden inside of the dashboard. All right, so let's go ahead and check out some of our stuff up here with our census display. I'll start with the climate controls. Uh, we have a standard dual zone automatic climate control on all the trims except for the momentum, which is single zone automatic. Very simple to use. You're just going to tap the zones you want to uh, condi air condition. You can change your fan speeds right there. And then you can just drag up and down to adjust the temperature. Now, one of our changes this year is that we have three stage heated seats now standard on every model with all wheel drive. Okay, so let's go ahead and check out the broader census display. So this is the 9-inch display. It is standard on every XC40, just like on the other Volvo models. And the software is pretty much the same as it's always been. So you have your home button right here, and then you operate through a basically tabbed system where you can click on things and expand them. On our R design, we do have standard navigation, and then all the models will have standard Android Auto and Apple CarPlay abilities. And since a lot of people have asked about how to change the color to white, you just go settings, my car, displays, and then you can choose if you want black or the bright mode. Now coming on up here, we will find an auto dimming mirror with the frameless design, three homelink universal remotes, and a compass. And then up at the very top, you'll find a panoramic moon roof. Uh, this is gonna be standard on our design and inscription and optional on the momentum for about $1,500. And as you can see, it is very large and has a kind of transparent sunshade. So sitting in the XC40's rear seat, um, normally in this class of vehicle, it almost feels like a penalty box sitting in the rear seat. And I'm happy to say with this XC40, it has a lot of space. I just feel overall very comfortable, which is certainly something you can't take for granted in this segment. Now, as far as the legroom figures, it's 36 inches of both leg, or 36 inches of legroom, 39 inches of rear headroom, which does place it right on par with that of the Volvo XC60 and that of the new Mercedes GLA as well. So behind your seating position, I have about, I would say four inches of rear leg room. My feet can easily set up underneath the seat, um, but really I'm just noticing the exceptional headroom back here. Now, as far as the features themselves, uh, Volvo is gonna throw in standard vents. I like the design of these vents. And then down here for 2021, we do have an update and that's gonna be two USB type C ports. And then in addition to that, we also have three stage heated rear seats, which are included in the climate package. And then if we drop down the armrest, we have cup holders inside, as well as little storage cubbies on the sides of each seat. Now coming to the tailgate of the XC40, you are gonna have a standard power one. And if you opt for the R design, it's also gonna be hands-free. So just wave your foot under the bumper to open. And once it opens up, you're gonna be once again pleasantly surprised by the amount of space that it does offer. Since you have 21 cubic feet behind the second row seats, and that expands to 47 cubic feet if you fold them, um, that's gonna be smaller than, of course, some, something like the XC60. However, it's right in line with that of the all-new Mercedes GLA. 
And then as far as how Volvo has finished it, uh, we do have a nice carpeting along the floor, but they have also thrown in a really cool trick, and that's that you can really rearrange this cargo floor to any different configuration that you could possibly need. Um, so once again, Volvo is really nailing it with making the most of the available space. And then off to the side, we do have a little bit of more storage cubbies. Uh, you can also fold the seats 60-40 split, and we have a cargo cover up top. Now your passenger seat is going to be the same adjustments as the drivers. You even have the power lumbar support. And then as far as the glove box is concerned, it's nicely dampened. Um, it is not felt lined. However, I'm really pleasantly surprised with the amount of space in here as well because there's lots of it. Uh, definitely fits our coupons in there just fine. And then up top, we have a sun visor with a mirror LED light, and it does also detach. However, it does not extend. And that's 60 miles an hour. Wow. And we're going uphill too. That's just very nice. Um, now this here, we have the T5 model. So that's going to be the more powerful version of the XC40. So what you're looking at is 248 horsepower, 258 pound-feet of torque. That's from a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. Now, like I said, this is the more powerful version. There's a T4 model uh, that is going to offer 184 horsepower. Yeah. yeah, so quite a bit of a power boost when you go for that T5. Um, but definitely, as far as this one is concerned, feels really good upon takeoff. Um, some in this class can maybe feel a little bit sluggish, um, but this is definitely not going to be one of them, especially in the T5 uh, configuration. Right, and uh, I don't really want to jump the gun too much, but with these engines, it's important to note with the T4, that's going to be the front wheel drive option. With the T5, that's going to be the all wheel drive option. Uh, so that's going to come paired with it. And one of the things I really like is that Volvo makes that option available to you for only 2,000 additional dollars. So you get both all wheel drive and the more powerful engine. So that seems like quite no the steal. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, there's a good reason why you mostly see them equipped like this as T5s. But cruising up here to 60 miles per hour, uh, let's talk about the ride quality um, and the noise level entering into this cabin for the XC40. Now, um, first thing I'm noticing is that the ride quality is pretty good. Um, it's, I would say, middle of the pack as far as like firmness and softness is concerned. This is not like a super luxurious ride, but it also is not as firm as other stuff like we just drove the all-new GLA um, a few days ago, as a matter of fact, and that was definitely firmer than this. Um, so this is definitely straddling the middle of the segment when it comes to like the ride quality. Um, and then as far as the noise level, I will get a reading going this speed. To my ear, it sounds quieter than the GLA. It definitely does. Looks like on the sound level reader, we're going to be getting around 59 decibels, which that does place it pretty much the same as the GLA. I believe that's actually exactly the same, but I, I'm with Drew on this one. I think it sounds a little bit quieter than the uh, new model GLA. I really like the responsiveness of this turbo engine. Um, you know, you don't really have any tur turbo lag or anything like that, and it certainly feels plenty spry for a vehicle like this. I also like the little whine. Yeah, I there's a little turbo acceleration. Whine. Now, kind of rounding that corner there, that does remind me of the handling and how that you know maybe stacks up against the GLA, which, like we said, we drove on this exact road just about a week ago. And this is definitely going to be a more comfort-oriented model compared to the GLA. So where that had kind of a little bit of German athleticism, the steering was a little bit tighter. On this, we have really lightweight steering. 
Um, it's very fast responding though. You can see that you get instant response. It's really quick and it feels nice, but it is definitely on the lighter side of things. As far as your transmission, you have an eight speed automatic transmission. Um, you know, it's very comfortable, smooth operation. Really don't have any complaints about the transmission itself. Now, today's air ball though <laughs> is this shifter. Um, as I talked about in the interior part, the operation is a little strange. You have to do a double tap to get to reverse and a double tap to get to drive. So you're always going through neutral, which I think is kind of a bad decision on Volvo's part because A, most people you're never really trying to get into neutral except on rare occasions. And B, in a quick maneuver, it really just requires extra thinking. You have to really think about the double tap, you know, and there could be a situation where maybe you accidentally select neutral and you're trying to get to drive a reverse really quickly. I think that's a safety hazard. Yeah. But going from that, let's talk about the slam dunk. Uh, this vehicle really has a lot of areas that we could have picked for the slam dunk, but the thing that stands out most to us is just the packaging overall. Uh, and just how much, you know, this is a small vehicle size-wise, but yet this cabin feels super spacious and you're really getting more storage space than you would find in many vehicles, classes above. You know, like a, an Audi Q7 has way less storage than this vehicle. Uh, despite being way larger, you have trash cans. They just seem to have really put a lot of effort into making the most of the space, and I really appreciate that. Go ahead and try out the dynamic mode here and see how things change up. Definitely <laughs> really jumps up on the uh, throttle <laughs> response there. That that was almost surprising to me, um, just how quick they got off yeah. the line with a very little throttle input. Um, so that definitely dials things up. Now let's talk about the fuel economy. So for the T5, uh, like we mentioned, it does come standard with all-wheel drive and the T4 is front-wheel drive. So I'm pleasantly surprised that really your fuel economy penalty is not much for getting all-wheel drive and the better engine. So it's 22 city, 30 highway, 25 combined for the T5. And then if you go for the T4, it's 26 combined. So only one APG difference, getting all-wheel drive and a better engine. So once again, not gonna say well it's kind of a no-brainer to go for the t5 at least uh, so definitely something to consider there now price you may be uh, curious as to how much this Volvo XC40 is going to cost you. Is it going to be more than the competition or right in line with that? And I'm pleasantly surprised that uh, for 2021 there's actually a $1,000 price decrease on most of the trim levels, which that almost never happens, so that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. uh, so that means the momentum is going to start at $33,700, our design $38,950, and inscription $39,450, uh, and those are for the T4 models. Now this one's T5 R design, so that's forty thousand nine fifty, and then we have about three thousand dollars of options plus the destination charge of nine ninety five. Brings this one to forty four thousand six hundred and ten bucks as equipped. And um, guys, I really can't stress this enough. Uh, we've been in a lot of vehicles in this segment, and this is a really good value for that. Uh, it's not just a really good offering in the segment, it's also a really good value monetarily because we did that GLA just a few days ago and that was 43000 and you're missing so much more equipment um, and it goes up to like 60 and this one's pretty much fully loaded at 45 And that just overall is really the main takeaway for this XC40 is that Volvo really has created a fantastic package here. Uh, you know, at the beginning we asked with the mounting competition because we have uh, you know, new Q3, new GLA, refreshed, X1. Um, how does it hold up? It definitely holds up great. Uh, this has a lot of advantages over the German competition. And like Mason mentioned, you're even going to ring in at a better price tag. Well, guys, we're one of the first people to check out the 2021 changes for this Volvo XC40 R design. Um, so if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below where you'll find tons of other automotive content. 
We have lots of content on this XE40 as well as the rest of the Volvo lineup, including that signature XE90 model. And we'll catch you next time as we sample more of the latest automotive delicacies.